Hello friends, in this video we are going to discuss about gamma function. This is lecture number one of uh, gamma function series and uh, of mathematical physics BSc. This is for BSc and MSc students. So hope you're gonna like the video and if you like the video hit the thumbs up button and also share with your friends and if you are new then please subscribe to my channel and inspire me to create new contents for you. Okay, now let's start with the definition. So, definition of the gamma function is, uh, the gamma function is defined as uh, the gamma of n by this integral, okay, for n is greater than 1, okay. So, this is the definition of gamma function and we're going to use this, okay, definition in solving problems, okay. So, first, let us discuss about very two important properties of gamma function, okay. So, now, let me go to the next slide. These are two very important properties of gamma function and now let us prove one by one. First let me prove this one first. So first one, proof of the first one. So in order to prove this, uh, by definition of gamma function, we know that uh, gamma function of n is given by, uh, let me write, uh, this is given by this, this is by definition. Right. this is by definition of gamma function right so now let me use integrating by parts uh, if you integrate by parts here you see x to the power n minus 1 e to the power minus x so here first function this one is algebraic function and this one is exponential function they are in proper order uh, because when we have product of two functions then we need to follow this rule i let right i let so first so here you see algebraic function should appear before the exponential function so uh, this is algebraic function this is uh, your exponential function if you have in this form minus x x to the power n minus 1 dx then you have to rearrange in this form okay so hope you have understood this thing so now let me integrate this integration of x to the power n minus 1 e to the power minus x dx and that's going to be equal to uh, if you take this one as first function u and this is second function v and if you apply this uh, method that uh, integration of u v uh, dx that's going to be u integration of v dx minus then u sorry integration uh, derivative of u then integration again v dx uh, then dx right so we're gonna apply this property and if you use this property then what you will get then you're gonna have what uh, first function x to the power n minus 1 then integration of e to the power minus x minus then again integration derivative of x to the power 1 uh, sorry x to the power n minus n 1 right then again integration e to the power minus x dx then whole dx right so that's what you're gonna have so x to the x to the power n minus 1 then if you integrate this you're gonna have e to the power minus x by minus 1 because you know e to the power integration of e to the power minus a, sorry mx dx that is uh, e to the power mx by m right we have applied this property so now uh, derivative of x to the power n minus 1 that's going to be n minus 1 into x to the power n minus 2 right n minus 2 and integration e to the power n minus x uh, e to the power minus x by minus 1 if you integrate this right and let me write this minus 1 here it's going to be plus because of that minus 1 right dx so hope you have understood <coughs> up to this part so now let me use this result here let me clean these things what i have written here so let me take the final result just wait so now let me take this only so here what we have to write so as we have to write here the limits here 0 to infinity then here 0 to infinity right so we're going to use these two results and here you see uh, if you put infinity here e to the power 
minus infinity that's going to be equal to 0 right and if you put 0 z here you see when you put infinity here, then x would be replaced by infinity and e to the power minus infinity is 0 0 into anything that's going to be 0 so for infinity x equal to infinity these terms will become 0 and if you put 0 if you put x is equal to 0 then definitely this term going to be 0 then 0 into anything is 0 right so let me write one more part here just one more step so, so putting upper and lower limits uh, here from this part we're going to have uh, this then uh, right so let me write this one here then plus n minus 1 into 0 infinity then x sorry 0 to infinity x to the power this n minus 2 it can be written as n minus 1 minus 1 e to the power minus x dx now you compare this part with this definition right so here we have n minus 1 when we have n here so if you have n minus 1 minus 1 then you must have n minus 1 here right so that's why we can write we can replace this part by gamma of n minus 1 right so hope you have understood this right so here you see so this is 0 0 into anything is 0 so this term is gonna be 0 and this is also gonna be 0 because 0 to the by anything is 0 0 into anything is 0 so that's why this first two parts equal becomes 0 minus 0 that means 0 simply right so n minus 1 then gamma function of n minus 1 that's what we have got so which is equal to which is equal to uh, n minus 1 gamma of n minus 1 so that is what we have got which is equal to gamma of n right so now let me go to the next slide so at the end we have got this result that let me write this one like this so implies gamma of n we have got this right so now let me copy this final result and then take, let me go to the next slide so here you can see this is what we have got now replace replacing n by n plus 1 if you replace the n by n plus 1 then what you gonna have so replace this n by n plus 1 right then if you put here n plus 1 then n plus 1 minus 1 that's gonna be 0 so that's why only n will be left out there similarly here also if you put this uh, if you replace this n by n plus 1 then this minus 1 plus 1 gonna be cancelled right so then we're gonna get this result n plus 1 gamma function of n plus 1 n into gamma of n that is what we will have right so this first property is proved now let me show you how to prove this second property so here is the slide i have written the same formula twice actually uh, this should be factorial n this should be factorial n right this should be factorial n okay our property number two is gamma function of n plus one that is factorial n right so we're gonna have to take the help of this first property to prove this one so let me take a new slide let me copy this property and let me take a new slide okay now let us prove this second property so in order to prove this uh, we must take the first uh, take the help of the first property we know that uh, gamma of n plus one that is gonna be n then gamma of n so therefore uh, you see then we have okay using this property then we have from the above property
let me give this one as equation number one so gamma of n if you replace the n plus one by n then you must have here n minus one uh, gamma of n minus one right then gamma of n minus one that's gonna be gamma of uh, sorry n minus two into gamma of n minus uh, two right so here you see if you see the pattern this one is one less than this right so if you follow this pattern if this is n then it must be n minus one if this is n minus one this must be n minus two right so that is the logic behind it and similarly you can find n minus three sorry not three two so n minus three gamma of n minus three and if you keep going this way now you see this n minus one can be replaced by this result and then what you will get n minus one into n minus two into uh, uh, sorry gamma of n minus two that's what you will get then again this gamma of n minus two can be replaced by this result and if you do so then what you will get then you will get here n minus three then gamma of n minus three then if you continue this process then what you will get you will get again n minus four and dot 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 so on then you will get three into two into one that's what you will get right so because you see suppose you have five then you have written a five minus one then you have written five minus two and so on then five minus two is nothing but uh, three right then five minus four that means uh, uh sorry next term will be five minus three which is equal to two then next term will be five minus four that which is equal to one right so this is nothing but factorial five so similarly this whole thing can be written as factorial n right so what we're going to do here so let me write here this is this should be continued so on right then using above results using above results in so let me write this on here in equation number one so we're gonna have a gamma of n plus one that's gonna be n so here you see this gamma of n uh, using these results uh, this gamma of n can be replaced by this right so first we have n here so let me write n then we have gamma of n which can be replaced by this value n minus 1 n minus 2 n minus 3 n minus 3 dot 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 3 into 2 into 1 right so on which is equal to factorial n so that that is how it is proved that gamma of n plus 1 is equal to factorial n hence it is proved so hope you have understood this okay now let me take a question okay I'm going to take the question from uh, mathematical physics books uh, by Iskedas. I used to follow that book, right? So here you see uh, the question is uh, evaluate gamma of minus half, gamma of minus half. Okay. So now you see this is a negative number right we have got the definition of gamma of n for n greater than zero so that's why what we're going to do so here you see we're going to use this property gamma of n plus one that is n gamma of n right so here you see as we have the definition of uh, this uh, you know gamma function for n greater than zero that the definition is given for n greater than is equal to zero sorry n greater greater than zero only for n greater than zero so that's why we are not going to take n plus one minus half right because this uh, will be negative right so that's why let us put n is equal to minus half minus half then we will get n plus one that's going to be plus half because minus half plus one 
is plus half right so from this property from this above property what we can write we can write that uh, here gamma of n is equal to n plus 1 by n right so that's why here you see so now this n is minus half in uh, in our case we have taken minus half now this is minus half so here we have only minus half in the denominator there is no gamma function that's why uh, no issue with the minus sign and uh, in the numerator we have uh, plus half and remember the value of gamma function of half is pi root pi sorry not only pi gamma function of half is root pi so i will show you how uh, we have got this value of uh, gamma of half is root pi square root pi uh, we're going to discuss it in the uh, we're going to discuss this in the next video okay so sorry so gamma function of minus half this is equal to root pi square root this is equal square root this is not gamma function here this is square root of pi this is gamma function here you see this is gamma function but here this is square root of pi minus half which can be written as minus 2 root pi okay this is our answer so hope you have understood this so just remember for the time being that uh, gamma function of uh, gamma function of half is square root of pi right so hope you have understood and see you in the next video if you like my video then please hit the thumbs up button also share with your so friends if you like my videos then please share with your friends hit the thumbs up button also hit the bell icon so that you get notified when new video will be uploaded and please subscribe the channel so thank you for watching see you in the next video bye